reflections, I suppose, are as much for me as it is maybe for someone else or even you. <laughs> because I think about everything that happens in my day. I don't dwell on it, but I ponder it. I consider it. I meditate on it, so to speak. Because one of the things I learned very early on, I mean, I got saved a long time ago. I mean, when I say saved, what I mean by that is the reality of the choice I made to give my life to God and to have Him start to work in my life to change me from the inside out, to take responsibility for all my actions, all my sins, all my ways, was back in 1974. Now, I was so desperate for God that it was a no-brainer when I got saved. It was a very emotional experience. I mean, it wasn't just crying. There was some miraculous things that just went boom and boy. And God had chosen at some point in time, more than I know, to use me in some ways that maybe he doesn't need to use other people that way, or maybe he uses you that way. Either way, you might find comfort in something that I reflect on over the years of thinking about the human condition, the spiritual condition, the emotional condition. Ah, such a condition. We need conditioner. And the truth is, we do. Because over the years, you'll either get closer to God or you'll get farther from God. Now, God may be working on you and you may not be saved or you may be saved and you may be backslidden or you may be a hundred one different things that possibly could be happening in your life. That's why I sit around, reflect on things. I look at things. I consider things. And this new, uh, get my other glasses on feel better about looking in the camera. No, I don't, <laughs> because there's glare, but looking at the time to see what time it is. Let's see, how much time do we have? Oh, we got 13 minutes. Great. But the point being is, how much time do you think you have to consider your ways? You know, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about let a man consider his ways. Let a man consider what he's doing. Let a man ponder these or even you know they marry you know ponder these things in their heart there's so many types of historical lessons to be learned from the bible that you should really take it to heart in some ways that if it applies to you use it if it doesn't don't abuse it but you know because it's going to turn out to be you're one of those stories but learn if you can from other people's mistakes, which is what the Bible is. It's a whole listing of a bunch of mistakes, as well as successes. But it's a reality check. It shows a life, not everything in it, but it shows lives that have made big, wrong choices. And sometimes still came out okay. Or shows right choices and comes out wrong in the end, sometimes. Not too many of those, but a few. But the point being is... That's why we consider or we read and study the scriptures. Now, I'm not a person that believes that, you know, you get, you know, become a Christian or you become a Messianic or you become a Jew or you become a Catholic or you become a Protestant or you become a Mormon, whatever you think you are. I'm not someone who says, you know, well, for the rest of your life now you need to study the Bible, you know, and become a master's degree and, you know, repeating the same thing over and over again and find something new every time. No, I believe that when you find God, you hang on with both hands. Because, baby, it's going to be a ride. I mean, it's going to be worse than anything you've ever imagined in a roller coaster. Because your life's going to have ups and downs and sideways and inside outs and upside downs and flips and twists. And things are going to happen that you don't know how to do, that you have no preparation for, that you were not trained to do. I mean, even people who grow up in religious opposition, meaning that they are part of some kind of religious institution, whether Christian, Protestant, um, Muslim, or any religion, things happen that they're not prepared for. And that's why reflecting or looking 
over or considering the things that you do is always a good deal. You may not, you know, want to be as honest with yourself as you might be before God, but that's the way you get when you get older. You learn to, hey, it is what it is. I mean, you know, you did it, so own it. And, you know, I, I was thinking about something recently because I did something that, you know, an action that, you know, wow, talk about truth or consequences. I mean, I told the truth, you know, bottom line is that I said something that, you know, caused this massive consequence. Well, I went back to read my devotionals because I was kind of like wondering, well, what did I do? You know, why is there so much reaction and overreaction? Well, for people in general, it's hard to call someone who doesn't follow God overreacting because they only know one way to be. Reacting. They react. For every, you know, they say in, in uh, I don't know, physics or whatever, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Well, in human beings, no, there's an opposite extreme there. There's an action that can cause a reaction that is bigger than the action. It's like a little grain of mustard seed that grows up into a giant bush. Or it's like a little tiny, uh, uh, what do they call it, um, that you put into bread and it causes it to rise. I can't think of it right now, but um, leaven. You know, it's leaven. You put a little leaven, it's a little kind of like um, catalyst. Catalyst just means something that causes the reaction. And you put it inside a dough and poof, dough goes, goes up and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and expands more and more. I mean, you could say that that's what happens when you put your laundry soap into a washing machine in the old days. If it's got, you know, sudsy, you know, rather than nonsense, poof, it'll, you know, kind of come barreling out of your washing machine and, you know, flood the house. And, you know, at least it does in the cartoons or the movies. So this reaction caught me by surprise. I mean, I was dumbfounded until I read, you know, my devotionals again. I read it two or three times, actually, and I kind of went, wow. Of all the things that causes actions and reactions, you never know what does. You really don't. So, if you are, you know, thinking about in your life certain actions that you're about to take, like maybe getting saved, let me warn you, don't get saved. I mean, bottom line is, hey, you know, your life will never be the same. You'll be used by God, abused by God in some ways. Job was, you know, he, he didn't feel like he was being abused and he felt like it was unfair. And so he told God and God said, no, I can do whatever I want to do. Which was really an interesting statement. And bottom line is that he did do whatever he wanted to do. Now, Job in the end gets blessed by God. You know, God's that way, he loves you. you know, but if you don't kind of like respond to him, he loves you enough to send you to hell because that's what you choose. But the bottom line is, you know, you, you look at life and life catches up with you where you're busy doing so many other things in the world you see around you. You forget God, you know, the big guy, the man upstairs, you know, the sky preacher, you know, whatever you want to call him, the higher authority, the higher power, whatever, you know, if you're into four steps or something weird, you know, I don't know. But there is a creator who created you, and you are his creation. Now, what that means is that you really may think you're in control and got things going, but you're going to exist beyond death. And so, hey, you're going to figure it out one way or the other. Either you figure it out now, or you figure it out later. I mean, I personally think, you know, go have a talk with God and you can figure it out. Because God will prove himself to you. There is no doubt that God said, hey, prove me. God said bluntly, hey, I, I exist, you know, so I don't need to explain myself. I need you to figure it out for yourself. Well, okay, you know, and I did, you know, I, I doubted 100%. You know, I mean, I was the biggest skeptic there was in the world until all of a sudden I was the biggest, you know, convinced completely, 100%, no doubt about it, not a question. There's no question in my mind, even to this day, about... See how many times we go, yeah, we've got five more minutes. There's no doubt in my mind that not only does God exist, but that 
Jesus really is, was, and does, and still lives, and is who he said he was, is, and still exists in being. And that's fascinating, because that means that beyond a lot of people's religious observations of what they think they're doing, like being good or being bad or being whatever they're being, holy, Jesus is beyond that, bigger than that, smarter than that, you know, and Jesus explains his father to us. So I kind of have to go back to my, you know, original thing about truth and consequences. Like, man, the consequences suck. So why be a Christian? You know, why get saved? Why, why ever open your mouth? You know, shut up and just, why can't we all just get along? Well, God says so. No, this is not your home. This is not your world. This is not the life you were intended to have. This is not the being that you were created to become in eternity. There's more that's going to happen to you than you have even a concept of. I've got so much waiting, so much happening, so much that's going to be done when you die that you not even look back and think about it. You won't even remember the former things. This life. Because, like Keith Green said, hey baby, what's going on up there is so much more than what's going on down here. And I like that, because, you know, it bums me out. Really. I mean, I get told things that, you know, if I wasn't older, if I hadn't been given, if God wasn't there for me to still double check with him, to talk to him, to relate to him, to have him explain to me things. I couldn't live through some of the stuff I've been through. Man, not just Crohn's disease. I mean, just people telling me things. I mean, oh my God. You know, last 24 hours, you know, I decided, okay, Lord, what do you want to do? You want to bring back these reflections, you know, video and all that stuff? And, you know, it was like, God didn't say yay. He didn't say nay. He said, go for it. Boom! All hell broke loose. But you see, if you're called the salt of the earth, if you're called the light of the world, if you're supposed to be the, you know, not example, because Jesus is the example, I'm not. Oh, God, no, I'm not an example of a Christian. Jesus is. But if you're supposed to be the one who says, hey, that's wrong, or yay, that's right, or whatever it may be, you're going to have all hell come against you because hell wants you to get along. The world wants you to get along. People want you to get along. Dogs want you to get along. Cats want you to get along. Everything is under a curse, so everything wants you to get along so that you could be cursed. Because it's all corrupted. So you could be corrupted. Now, I know I'm corrupted. I, I have no doubt about that. I was told a long time ago, hey, I was born in sin, I was raised in sin, and I'm going to die in sin. So I need to be forgiven. Okay, I get that part. Now, it was easy for me because my mother conceived me outside of wedlock. She had me outside of wedlock and quite frankly raised me, you know, kind of like not married to most of the men that she had relationships with. That kind of leaves me in a peculiar spot if I wanted to look at examples. <laughs> uh, no, but that's why God designed you or me in the way he did. So that we could look back and look forward. So that we would realize that it's not about me. It's not about you, but it's about truth. It's about truth and consequences. The consequences of not knowing the truth means you will deceive yourself into thinking you're okay, and I'm okay, and we're okay, and we wind up in hell. But the truth is, you can be knowing and having a relationship with God in a personal and intimate way. You can have that assurance that I have, knowing full well that, hey, whatever the consequences were, you do what God says. If he tells you to, you know, like, wake up and go to work, wake up and go to work. If he tells you to stay home from work, stay home from work. He and you will decide whether he told you that or not. No one else can tell you that because, frankly, they weren't in on the conversation. But... If you do trust in the Lord like that, he will direct your path. 
He will love on you and he will help you with the consequences of following him in truth and in life.